Ah, Alka Zulka. Oh, a lava fell. A, uh, a lava fell girl, no less. With a marauder's axe, which honestly seems kind of adorable. And yet I'm sure she could chop my head off if she tried. Thank you for setting aside your preconceptions, Dekuman. I am acutely aware how unusual it is for a marauder to conduct research, as it were. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, there were some preconceptions involved. Oh, really? What do you think I did? Just beat on the ruins with my axe? Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. However, you shall soon understand that I am not at all like my more muscular brethren. Rather than rush blindly into the enemy's maw, I formulate and execute stratagems to great effect. My archaeological pursuits are but an extension of this practice, for at present I am researching the military tactics of ancient Nim. Nim? It would not surprise me if you were unfamiliar with Nim. The civilization flourished some 15 odd centuries ago, during the fifth astral era. Huh. I don't think I've actually had a chance to explain the astral and umbral eras. I will, uh, I'll go over that shortly once we're not in cutscene. The Nimians lived during an age of wonders when the magical arts flourished, but magics can be wielded for weal or for woe, and this period of peace eventually gave way to the Great War of the Magi. The nations of that bygone era brought earth-shattering magics to bear against one another, yet Nim, with only a handful of mages to support its army of marines, repulsed would-be invaders time and time again. Precisely how a military force of this composition could defy stronger neighbors is a mystery which has long puzzled mis military historians. By translating extant Nimian tablets which I have recently purchased, I mean to solve the riddle at long last. As my knowledge of Arcanema is cursory at best, I require an experienced arcanist to assist me with my analysis of any text pertaining to the magical arts. Will you be that Archimist Ekumon? I suppose I could be. There is, however, a complication. The Nimian tablets and other assorted relics, for which I paid an exceedingly large amount of money, were stolen en route to Limsa Limensa. Of course they were. Of course they were. The information inscribed upon those tablets could be of untold significance. I will not allow thieves to sell it to some rich old Don Collector for a pittance. Pray, accompany me to the Raincatcher Gully docks and help me reclaim my relics. I have strong reason to believe the perpetrators can be found there. Hmm. Uh, Eastern Lenosha, huh? It's actually reasonably close to a teleporter that I don't have. Of course. Well, there we are. That takes care of that Aether, right? And now that I've got a minute or two, I suppose I could talk a bit about the, uh, the whole era thing. So... Hmm, best way to describe this would be, uh, well, the world tends to be in either a flourishing or a declining uh, phase, and phase being loosely translated, basically like eras of prosperity versus eras of decline. And the prosperity eras, I'm already here, wow. The prosperity eras are the astral eras, and the eras of decline are the umbral eras, and I should point out, that we are currently in the seventh umbral era and this decline was of course brought about by bahamut and his big fat freaking moon landing around here and i notice that this has a duty calls it's gonna make my day interesting isn't it as i suspected they are not more than broken men who have seized the docks and taken to robbing every passing ship come let us put an end to their banditry and take back what is ours Ugh. Here we go again. I'm glad I got all that extra gear. Oh, wow, we just went right into it. There is no cutscene or anything. Here, I'm gonna take one of those and then immediately uh, get the guy in the back because I don't trust these guys in the back. You get a fester. You're toast. And you guys, you guys get the Bane. There's a big old Bane right in the face. Now they both have the dot. That makes, uh, oh yeah, they're going down a lot faster. Oh, oh, I see a Thaumaturge way off in the distance. These guys are all broken. Hmm. All right, let's deal with that Thaumaturge first because I do not like casters. Oh, oh, that Fester combo just wrecked him. Something fierce. Oh, how about another one? You want one too? 
Damn, that does good damage. Nice, nice, nice. And now we just have the Marauder to deal with. Uh-oh. I was about to miasma him in the face. Damn, that festers good damage. Alka-Zulka the Thinker. Uh, that's the only DPS class of the three. Over there! Let's bane the two of you idiots. And fester that one to get him off my uh, high priority target there. Nice, nice. Little downburst action. I don't even need to hit him with this. Oh, back up. There we are. Had to hit him, uh, had to refresh his dot there. And good night. Do you see any others? No. No? Excellent. Now, help me search for that damn tablet. There we are, stolen crate. You know, it's nice that they label these things for us. Yes, yes, this is it. A treatise on Nimian military tactics, just as I'd hoped. Uh, might not be the best point to, hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh my, oh my. I has a pixie. Hmm? Hello there. Am I hallucinating? Like, are these things made of magic mushrooms? The f Whoa! <laughs> Mayhap the tablet could explain this. Hmm. Scholars? Familiars? Fairies? Oh my god! The sunlight of Eos doth soothe and shield. The moonlight of Selene doth silence and strengthen. Oh, oh, very nice, very nice. Whoa. Dekuban. By the Twelve, have you any idea what this means? We have rediscovered the long lost magical arts of Nimian scholars. This is wee shit, it's my damn fairy. Well, that was, uh, interesting. Fairies. Honest to God, fairies. Well, now I've seen everything. Anyway, I shall return to the guild and begin translating the tablet. I cannot wait to see what other secrets it contains. Speak with Alka back at the Marauders Guild, huh? Well, not just yet. Might as well hit up the Upkalu Falls first. Ah. There's our, uh, there's our Mikote that we've been looking for. You are Dekumon Let's Play, I assume. Well met, and thank you for coming. My name, as you have obviously surmised, is Yumitria. I am a member of the Sons of St. Quant. Ours is a Charlian order that seeks the lost knowledge of the Alleghen Empire. And in that regard, we have recently made a singularly important discovery at our dig site in Mordona. We salvaged from the ruins a set of ancient texts describing the existence of a sect of Alleghen mages known as Summoners. These were arcane practitioners said to have the ability to siphon the essences of the primals and manifest this stolen energy as a biddable ally known as an Eggy. <laughs> Should we succeed in resurrecting such art, then we might well hold in our hands the power to bring this age of conflict to an end. There is, however, as there always must be, one monumental obstacle to realizing this reality. In order to manifest these obedient incarnations of the beastmen's savage deities, one must first defeat a primal and capture its etheric essence. Thus, only one who can boast such a daunting achievement under his belt may even begin on the path to becoming a summoner. Do you understand now why I called upon you? Yeah, because I beat Ifrit's ass into the ground. Yep, yep, you did. If you wish to contribute to my research, then come to me in the west of Burgot Strike in southern Thanalan. There shall we conduct a ritual of summoning the Austerities of Flame. Huh. 
I swear if you actually pop out Ifrit and I have to beat his ass again, we're not going to be, uh, oh hi. You know, you're, uh, you have good timing there, showing off what the Ifrit Eggy actually looks like. Sheesh. Ay, 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 Okay, finally made it here. Oops, I gotta move my mouse. I gotta tell you, this is a weird Aetherite that they're asking me to go nearby. Like, okay, I'm gonna bring up the map here for this uh, reference's sake. So, in order to get to this area, which is a level 30 area, I have to walk through this area, and this is a level 45 area, which means everything in there is a little on the scary side. <sighs> and I still have to keep heading into the damn desert. Hello? Another duty calls. I suppose I shouldn't be all that surprised, but still. Hell uh, yeah. Alright, what's up? Greetings to you once more, Dekumon. I had a feeling this unique opportunity would be nigh impossible for you to ignore. Let us proceed directly to the ritual, shall we? According to the records we recovered, the summoners of old would perform these rites in a land in which the naturally dominant element matched the aspect of the avatar they wished to call forth. Only in such a place might one sufficiently shift one's etheric balance in the desired direction. Ah, so because I want to summon Ifrit, a fire element, I need to be in a land where there's a lot of fire ether, aka a desert or a volcano. The element of fire is especially strong here in the Singoli Desert. I can think of no land more fitting in which to summon an incarnation of the Lord of the Inferno. Before we begin, I must insist that you accept this gem. It may appear of little worth, but within its faceted depths dwell the memories of long deceased summoners. Now, you must focus. Visualize the ether flowing through you, a vibrant current of energy transforming into living fire. Hold this image in your mind, and the raging heat of your life force shall spawn an eggy wreathed in flames. Beware, however, that this nascent entity will bef appear before you unbound and hostile. It is your charge to overpower the Avatar and establish yourself as its master. The path of the summoner is not, if not fraught with peril. Oh joy! It's a Pokemon battle. I gotta kick its ass for it to listen to me. Alright. Let's see how this is gonna work. Yep, there's our Soul Crystal for the summoner class. I assume this is our, uh... Our folk- Oh! Oh, that, uh... That worked faster than I thought it would! Defeat Ifrit Eggy. Well, let's summon the, uh, Carbuncle first. This heat is almost intolerable. Yeah, I know it is. Okay, I do not need to hit this guy with Bane. Oh boy. All right, let's move slightly. I don't want her getting hit by any random BS. Oh, thank you for the shield. That shield is a lifesaver. Oh, it's out of gas. Give me another shield. I need to recharge the, uh, oh, oh, hold up. If it summons spirits, sprites to do its bidding, have a care, they do not surround you. Oh, oh, he's got, uh, where, where, where? I see another one on the bar. Let's get rid of this one. I don't like having these, uh, these little bastards around. Thankfully, it seems that, uh, Dimitra there is doing a good job of making sure that these guys do not become a problem. Oh, oh fudge, he's got nails! Oh, that's not good. You must shatter the crimson nails. They amplify the Eggie's power. Okay, okay, I got it. Oh, oh okay, okay. I'm definitely festering these guys. It's a good idea. Uh-oh. All right, let's get this done and over with. That nail's almost gone. And now we have one last one. Oh, that chunked it really good. All right, that's it. Now for effort. The crimson nails are destroyed. Now it's time to press the attack. I'm working on it. This guy's got a lot of health. He is definitely a decent... God dang it. Knock that off. Hard enough doing this without me having to move every few seconds. Oh, thank goodness that fester does such good damage. Get your dots back on you, because you are just about done. Come on, come on, and toast! Duty complete. 
Oh, what, that's it? No fancy cutscene? No nothing? Just boom, back here into the field with Yumichir fanning herself because we're at a frickin' desert! Most impressive, Dekumon! The Fireborn Eggie has submitted to your will. You have mastered the austerities of flame, and that is no small feat. Pray let us return to Upkalu Falls that we might further discuss your achievement. Alright, we can turn in both our job quests now. Awesome. Alright, since we're already talking about uh, the summoner thing, we might as well turn that one in first. Alrighty, finally back here. This is truly a momentous occasion. You have rescued the lost art of summoning from the grasping mire of forgotten history. But you must know more of the avatar you have bound. In the ancient tongue of the Allegan Empire, it would be known as Ifrit Eggy, where Eggy translates approximately to pure or the essence of. In short, you have tamed a willful manifestation of Ifrit's raging fires. As you might expect from an entity born of the Lord of the Inferno, this avatar and his capacity for destruction should serve you well in your battles to come. With such an ally at your command, it is not too soon to take upon yourself the title of Summoner. You have proven yourself more than worthy of the soul crystal you now possess. Yet be that as it may, the road before you was long and arduous. If you would triumph in this age of conflict, you must needs master more than just the Eggie of Fire. I suggest you next fix your gaze upon claiming a servant of unyielding stone. This will of course necessitate you joining an expedition to defeat the primal known as Titan. This beloved divinity of the Cobalt possesses the greatest threat to Limsa Lamensa, and it is there that you shall find allies in your cause. The risks are great, but so too are the rewards. Topple the Lord of Crags, and we may progress to the next stage of our historic research. Fair fortune to you, Dekumon. The next summoner quest is available on 35. Awesome! And with that, I am now a summoner. Ah, we have hit our first job. Oh, we're gonna get a cutscene out of this, huh? Yes, you learn how to summon Ifrit Eggy, summon three. Jobs. So, might as well go over this really quick. Jobs are basically, as I, I believe I've mentioned this at least once, they're basically extensions of base classes. And there is really, once you have access to a job, there is no reason to ever go back to the base class. There really isn't. Now, I could put on the crystal and do my summoner stuff now, but first things first, I need to head back to Limsa and turn in this scholar quest. Ah, Alkazulka, my old scholar. Excellent timing, Dekumon. I have just finished transcribing a section which will doubtless be of interest to you. According to the tablet, the crystal from which the fairy sprang forth is called the Soul of the Scholar, and it contains the wisdom of those long dead Nemean mages. With it, you can call upon the fairy as you did before, and bind her to your will. As I said before, I have little knowledge of Arcanima, so unless you have some objections, I would like to entrust the crystal to you. Oh, and you needn't recompense me. Simply knowing that the lost arts are being preserved is enough. I shall devote my energies to deciphering the remaining text. Should I discover anything new, I promise that you will be the first to know. The next scholar quest is available upon reaching 35. Awesome! Ah, uh, and with that, not only are we a summoner, we are now a scholar. That means we have access to both the DPS and a healer class. Or I should say, a DPS and a healer job. <laughs> the fairy is awoken by the soul of the scholar. With the soul of the scholar equipped, you can summon a fairy to aid you in battle. When called forth, she will assume the form of a healer type pet. Number of build gear sets has increased once again. Awesome. So, I'm going to take a couple minutes, do a little fiddling around with the old hot bars, because when I swap to these new classes, they're going to get screwed up something fierce. I guarantee it. So, I will meet you back. Uh, actually, I'll meet you back over at Little Solace when I'm all set and ready to go. Actually, it seems I have one more thing to do before I drop off this main story quest. Uh, I, if you may have noticed, something has popped up alongside our main scenario quest indicator over here. 
Uh, hello, hello, yes, there it is. This handy little thing that tells me what my main story quest and also any really important side quests I need to be doing. They like told me to go do my job quest. Well, now it's telling me to go do this one. My feisty little chocobo, and this thing is super important to hit as soon as you hit level 30. So come on down to Ch Camp Tranquil and hit this up as soon as you can. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> the unmistakable smell of chocobo clings to you, adventure. Why don't you take a bath? Would I be correct in assuming that you have your own trusty steed? Aye, I thought so. Now tell me, is your bird battle trained? If not, you might consider seeking the advice of Luliquat over at Bent Branch Meadows. The Scardian native is something of a prodigy in all matters concerning our fine feathered friends. He should be able to help you attain greater affinity with your bird. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds very handy. Bent Branch Meadows, here I come. So if the quest title and the little tidbit of, holy cow, there's a bouncing car. <laughs> Hang on, man. I, uh, I, uh, hi there. <laughs> I bit, uh, someone's trying to pick me up for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, hold on a second here. I got to deal with this. Anyway, as I was saying before I was so politely interrupted by that other player, this quest will actually let me use my Chocobo mount as a party member in the overworld. And it is so, so useful. <laughs> I'm getting messages again from this person. Greetings, adventurer. Is there something you need? You wish to have your chocobo trained in combat. This is no small request you make. Riding your bird is one thing. Asking it to take hurts in your name is quite another. I will help train your chocobo, but on the promise that you will never unduly expose it to danger. Do I have your word? Don't worry, I can't take it into dungeons with me or trials or anything else like that, so undo danger? No, this bird is perfectly safe. Very well. To begin, we will need a bunch of geishal greens. You have my leave to pick one from the fields yonder. Return here when you have it. Ah, Geishal Greens. Now, if you've ever played Final Fantasy before, you know Geishal Greens are a Chocobo's favorite food. In this case, Geishal Greens are usable items that let you summon your Chocobo as, as a companion for a short time. I think it's 20 or 30 minutes. Huh, You're, uh, I'm only gonna get one, huh? Now there is a shop around here that will sell me more. So I am gonna stock up as soon as I get this quest done. Have you acquired the greens? I have indeed. Superb. Then we shall get straight to it. Doubtless you already know this, but chocobos are highly fond of geishal greens. They love the leafy vegetable so much, in fact, that they will completely forget their fears in the face of danger. Thus, by feeding your bird the greens, you can prevail upon it to fight beside you. And then, once called, it will be up to you to direct its actions as you see fit. You will find that your chocobo innately responds to a number of general commands. Give your bird an order, and it will act accordingly, and to the best of its ability. This simple yet effective methodology was developed by the Fortemp family, one of the foremost houses in Ishgard. And that concludes your lesson. Of course, it is not enough to merely hear about a practice. One must venture forth and attempt it oneself. Summon your chocobo with a bunch of geishal greens, and together make your way to Sorrel Haven. The broods is that prowl the, prowl the area ought to be a suitable challenge for you and your companion. Put down three of them, and return here. And lastly, by way of advice, I would recommend ke you keep an ample supply of geishal greens on your person at all times. Our resident vendor will be able to provide you with as much as you can carry. That is very true. Companions now available. It is very, very true that the that the uh, vendor over here will sell me as many as I can carry, and I definitely want to carry quite a few. Please tell me you have what I'm looking for. Yes, geishal greens. And yes, this is uh, definitely one of those things you're just going to want an ass load of. So I'm just going to buy 99. I will have plenty for a good while. And I can always come back here and get more. And they're not that expensive. And hello, that's big. <laughs> ah, this seems as good a spot as any to stop and do this. So in order to summon my Chocobo as companion, it's very simple. I just pop a Geishal Green. I do not need to worry about ordering my Chocobo. He's pretty uh, self-explanatory. But what I can do is now pop open this companion menu and check out his skills. So, these guys all start out pretty much at rank zero, and he'll get experience reasonably quickly. As he levels up, he will get skill points, 
And I can use those skill points, obviously, to give him skills. Now, since I'm probably going to be playing as a DPS most of the time on the overworld, I'll probably be giving him healer skills first and foremost. Now, these guys can hit rank 10 on their own, and that's enough basically to max out one tree. But if uh, you give them certain items, their max rank can actually go all the way up to 20. And as you can see, one Geishel Green has given him 30 minutes of time on the field, so let's use it wisely. Geez, I only killed one thing and he's already got a level. That's, uh, that's what you call fast. Yeah, the first kill and he's already got a first rank. So I'll give him Choco Regen, which means he can now basically cast regen skills on me or on himself. Very handy thing to have early on. Very useful to have all around. And you also notice his level is the same as my level. And that is basically permanent. His level will always be my level. So if I come out here as level 60, what you would call it, my chocobo is a level 60, what you would call it. If I get down synced because of a fate, my chocobo will get down synced with me. Now we only need to take out one more broods is, and these guys are really easy to deal with. I mean, I might be a touch over leveled, but not by much. Damn. That, uh, that Eggy Assault won the Crimson Cyclone because of the, uh, Ifrit Eggy. He did good damage. And, of course, I can still mount up. And he goes and basically hides in the party list. This is not eating up his timer while he's hidden like this. Well, Lucalot, check it out. My bird's following me. So, you have successfully negotiated your first few battles with your Chocobo? Well done. Tell me, how did it feel? Was it not supremely reassuring fighting with your feathered companion? Actually, it really does give you a good sense of security, especially if you can give this guy a lot of high ranks in the healer or defender class. He's pretty damn useful in the overworld. Your chocobo can make up for your shortcomings or build upon your strengths. Indeed, there are countless ways the two of you might complement one another. Through some experimentation, you will come to find the approach that serves you best. Ah, but before I forget, I have one last parting gift. A saddlebag for your chocobo. Carrying Geishel Greens about can be quite cumbersome after all, and there should be sufficient room for your personal belongings should the needs ar need arise. I pray it serves you well on your travels. You can now access your chocobo saddlebag. Supplementary storage window. Right, I forgot they added this in a relatively recent patch. Um, basically, this is extra item storage. I just have to be out of combat to access it. And he's got a new quest, huh? Bird in hand. Must own an apartment or an estate, or be sharing an estate. Must be on homeworld. Oh! Oh, this is a thing you can do if you have a house. Basically, you can build a uh, stable for your chocobo and let him passively gain XP over time. Handy thing to do. Honestly, don't expect to be doing it on this character. Alright, let's finally head over and drop off a simple gift.